this example, I'm going to show you how you can um, decompose a change in prices um, using a budget line and indifference curve to find the substitution effect and the income effect. Um, and so we'll be moving budget lines around and shifting things. Um, there are also a bunch of YouTube videos on this page that you should also look at. Um, this is one of the weirdest concepts in microeconomics. It's one of the trickiest things to wrap your head around. So lots of other um, econ professors have, have put out materials showing this. Um, it's really the easiest way to get it at first is to just go through the mechanics of it and just go through the motions of, of drawing a line, swinging it out, bringing it down parallel and drawing different lines. Um, we're not going to worry about the exact math. Um, lots of um, more official econ classes, if you were getting like a master's degree in economics, then you would have to do um, the math and figure out the formulas and where things cross. In this situation, we don't care. Um, you can draw indifference curves however you want. Um, you can draw budget lines however you want. We're not going to be super accurate. Um, it's really just to show the mechanics of how when there's a change in a budget, um, you change your consumption of, of a good, um, and that will increase um, or decrease depending on how the price changes. Some of that increase will be because of... Um, you're substituting and changing, um, making trade-offs with the other with the other good, and that's the substitution effect. And then some of that change in consumption will happen just because you're richer and you have greater income, and that will be the income effect. And so we'll we'll walk through an example of how exactly we can do that um, using budget lines and indifference curves. So let's go ahead and go to the screen here. Okay. So what we what we're gonna do here is we're going to go back to the example that we did um, when we talked about utility maximization. We had um, waffles and calzones that you could eat or consume. Um, the general prices that we had back then in the, in the original question were you could have um, $2 calzones and you could have $1 waffles. Okay, and then you had a budget of $10 or we'll say $20 here, just for fun. Okay, so that's your total budget. So if we want to draw a budget line, like we've been doing um, in your problem sets and other places, we'll just come down here and draw a nice straight line, and we'll draw another straight line like that. Beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna put waffles here on the x-axis, and we'll put calzones on the y-axis. Okay, so if we spent all of our money on calzones, we could get 10 calzones. So we'll put 10 right there. Um, if we spent all our money on waffles, we could get to 20 waffles. So we'll put 20 here. Again, that's not super accurate um, because 10, like that distance, we'll change it a little bit here. That's no longer 10. Here's 10. Okay, so we have 10 and 20. So that is our budget line, given the, the $20 that we have here. So let's draw a nice budget line right down to there. Okay, so that's what we can purchase. We could buy nine calzones and some number of waffles, two waffles. Um, we could buy 18 waffles and one calzone. We can have any combination along this line here. So any of these things, um, we can purchase that just fine because that's within our budget, okay? So um, where we're going to consume depends on the shape of our indifference curve. Um, in the example we did for utility maximization, I gave you a utility function. I think it was just like utility equals x times y, um, or it was the square root of x and y or something like that. And so we used math to figure out the best utility curve or the best indifference curve um, to figure out where it, is where it is tangent to that budget line. Um, for these types of examples, what we can do instead of trying to figure out exact math is we can instead just kind of draw an indifference curve like this and say that's the best consumption point. Sure, it doesn't actually matter um, for the sake of this class where that happens. We can just say that looks pretty accurate. Um, in this case, that is 10, sure, and 6, I guess. So if we kind of draw these dotted lines down, that's kind of where we have the optimal consumption point um, given our, actually it should be five. Five. Um, that's gonna maximize our utility. 
um, given the shape of that indifference curve that I just made. Okay, so in our hypothet hypothetical situation though, what happened is there's suddenly a flash sale on waffles and waffles are no longer a dollar, they're only 50 cents. So that changes our budget. Um, we suddenly, instead of being able to buy 20 waffles, we can buy 40 waffles. Um, if we spent all our money on waffles, we can now get 40. There we go. Which gives us a new budget line. So if we draw the new budget line from 10 to 40, we can see what that looks like. So it swings outward. Whoa. It swings outward there. So now we have a bigger possibility um, of buying stuff. We could get 20 waffles and some number of calzones here. We could get something over here. We can get something over here. We have all sorts of possibilities now because our budget is expanded, um, because waffles are cheaper. Okay, so where are we going to consume now? Um, are we going to double our waffle intake? Are we going to go up to 20 waffles now? Um, based on the shape of our preferences here, probably not. Um, our utility curve, our, our indifference curves here are all parallel to each other. So remember, we have like one curve that looks like this, another one that looks like this. They all kind of go out infinitely like this. Those are all different levels of utility with different combinations of waffles and calzones. And they're all kind of shaped like that. Those are far from perfect. That's okay. When you do this in your problem sets, your lines will also look kind of wiggly and curvy like that. And that is fine. Um, so what our goal now is to find where this new indifference or where which indifference curve hits this new red budget line. So if we draw an indifference curve that looks exactly like this one, just shift it out a little bit, we can do something like that. Sure. Which puts us at this point here. That's our new point of consumption. Okay. Um, which... Um, we will label these points now, just so we can remember them. This is point A, what we were doing before um, the change in budget. And this is now point B, what we're doing after the change in budget. And um, again, that's totally arbitrary. If you do this, it's going to look different. That's just how this works. And so now we're going to be consuming, that looks like 16 waffles, sure. And we're going to be consuming like seven calzones. Again, the, the exact numbers don't matter. What really matters is the, the fact that like the point went outward. We're on a new utility curve or a new indifference curve at an, a higher level of utility. So we are happier now that we're out here at indifference curve number two than we were back at indifference curve number one. We're happier. Okay. The total effect. So the, the effect of lowering the price in waffles changed our consumption by some amount. We went from 10 to 16. So that right there is our total effect. It's a total effect of six waffles. So what we can say is um, having um, or making the price of waffles go down by half, um, having the price of waffles um, has a total effect of six waffles. We are consuming six more waffles now because of the change in, um, in the budget or in the prices that we have. Um, again, that's not super accurate. If you do 16 times 0.5 plus seven times two, that's not gonna add up to 20, um, but it's close enough for this example. So that's our total effect. We want to decompose that effect though we want to figure out how much of that those six waffles we're getting are because we're richer and we can spend more on waffles and how much of that is that because we're switching some calzones for waffles or switching some waffles for calzones um, because of the trade-offs that we're making given um, given our utility so that's what we have to figure out here how much of that six is because we're richer and how much is it how much of it is because we're just switching products around so to do that, this is where we do the strange uh, mechanical thing that you just have to get used to with these graphs here, is we want to take the new budget line that goes from 10 to 40, and we're going to bring it back to where it is tangent with the original indifference curve, with indifference curve one. So I'm gonna put a piece of paper here on my screen so I can move it back perfectly. So 
we're going to move but also not zoom in so we're going to move it back so that it's tangent with this new indifference curve and we'll draw it with this gray line right about here that looks parallel okay so this gray line is parallel to the the red line it has the same slope we have just shifted it back so it's tangent to the original indifference curve which means it's about that point right there and we will call that point c okay that's the intermediate point um, that shows what we would be consuming back at our original level of happiness the original level of utility um, if we didn't have the expanded budget um, so that or if we did have the expanded budget but the same slope so the like back when prices were lower okay so what really matters here again is the mechanics so moving from a to c to c is the substitution effect moving from c to b is the income effect so A to C, we're on the same indifference curve. We're on indifference curve one here. So it's, we care about the distance between this point and that point. And this looks like it's 14 or 15. We'll call that 15. Sure. Um, again, if you, you would try to do this more accurately on like graph paper or something, um, because we don't have any equations, we're just kind of hoping that things line up. This is how it's generally done. Because, again, the numbers don't actually matter here. Um, it's the principle of the thing that matters. So what that shows, if we're going from 10 to 15, that is our substitution effect. So we're increasing our consumption of waffles, but it's because we're doing some trade-offs um, with calzones. And we're giving up some, cal some, some, of, some of the calzones to get extra waffles there. So the substitution effect means we're going from 10 to 15. So the substitution effect is five so we're substituting five waffles for or five calzone or switching calzones so that we can get five waffles is the trade-off that we're making there the income effect is the distance between c and b or moving from 15 to 16. so the income effect in this situation is one so that means we are buying one additional waffle just because we're richer and that gets us up to a happier level. We're moving from this lower indifference curve to the higher indifference curve. And so that's where we have a you know, greater benefit that we get um, from the situation here. So that's an example of, of a price increase. So let's quickly look at what happens if you have a price decrease. So we're going to use the same calzone and waffle example here. So let's draw the curve. We're going to move, we're going to go right here and right here. So here's our waffles and calzones. Okay, our budget was, or so it was $2 calzones, $1 waffles. So we said you could buy 10. So we'll put 10 right here and we could buy 20 waffles. Okay, so that's our budget line. Let's draw a nice straight line here that there's our budget line and we made up an indifference curve that looked something like this and so we're consuming 10 waffles and five calzones okay so that's the original budget line that we've been using in the other examples but now instead of the price of waffles going down by half to 50 cents we're going to say that the price of waffles suddenly doubled now waffles all cost $2 each instead of $1 each. So what that means is our budget line no longer goes from 10 to 20. It's going to go from 10 to 10. If we spent all our $20 in calzones, we could get 10. And if we spent all our money on waffles, we could also get 10. So our new budget line looks like this. All right. So how is that going to change our consumption of waffles and calzones? Where is our new optimal point? Again, if we had math and I knew um, the actual equation behind um, the indifference curve here, we could figure out the new place where it crosses um, using calculus or using Desmos, um, the website for graphing. Um, in this situation, we're just going to draw a new indifference curve. So here's our, our original indifference curve, indifference curve one. 
So we're just going to draw a new one that looks like the same shape. And it's going to be like this. I don't like that one. We're going to do it like this. There we go. That looks better. And that's going to be indifference curve 2, which is lower than the first indifference curve. We have less utility um, because we're consuming less. We are less happy. We'd be happier having more waffles and more calzones, but because the price changed, we're down low. Um, so first we need to figure out what the total effect is. So we can guess that's probably 5. So this looks like uh, 7. Cool. So we just went down. Um, three waffles. So our total effect is that whole distance. So here's point A, here's point B. So we moved from A to B. The total effect here is three, or negative three waffles. Okay, so we are consuming less because of this change in price, but we can also decompose this to how much are we consuming less because of trade-offs with calzones, and how much are we consuming less because we are poorer? Um, because our, our budget has shrunk. And so we can find the income effect and the substitution effect. So to do that, we need to do the weird line thing where we take the new budget line, the, the red line here, we're going to move that new budget line back to the original indifference curve and find where it's tangent, um, which is going to be, this is a poorly drawn line because it kind of jumps up. So we're going to pretend, yeah, we're going to pretend it's right here. OK, so there is our new intermediate point C, where it's it should be a tangent with that line. In general, it's going to be in between point A and B. If it isn't, it's because you've drawn a goofy indifference curve, which is mostly generally the case, because these things are hard to draw. Um, so there's our point C. So now what we can do is decompose it. So moving from A to C again, so A to C is the substitution effect. And then moving from C to B is the income effect. So moving from A to C means you're moving along this original indifference curve here. So that distance there is our substitution effect. So if we draw a line down to here, that looks like 7.5, sure. OK, so our substitution effect in this situation is moving from 7, uh, from A to C. So it's moving from 10 to 7.5, um, which is a number. 10 minus 7.5 is 2.5. Math is fun. Um, so our substitution effect here is 2.5. So that means we're changing our consumption of waffles and calzones because we're making trade-offs um, between waffles and calzones. Um, the income effect in this situation means we're going from C to B, or 7.5 here to 7. So the income effect there is 0.5. So we're consuming half of a waffle less because we are poorer, just because of the fact that we have less money. And so that's the income effect in this situation. And this works because waffles are considered a normal good. So if our if um, our income changes and we get richer or the price drops, we're going to consume more. If our income drops or the price increases, we're going to consume less. Um, and that's how we decompose this. That's the mechanics of it. Um, again, refer to the other YouTube videos that I have linked on this page so you can see other examples of this. All the examples go through the same mechanics where you essentially draw the original budget line, show the new budget line, move the new budget line back so it's tangent with the original difference curve, and then you can figure out the distance between the points. That's the mechanics of this, um, and that's how you can find substitution effects and income effects using budget lines and indifference curves.